If you've ever wanted to track down the location of a device that's broadcasting on Wi-Fi, we'll show you how to use Wireshark and a directional Wi-Fi antenna to track it down on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Wireshark is a program commonly used to decode and analyze different types of wireless transmissions. And today, we're going to look into a different use for it, where we're going to be using some of its handy analysis tools to actually graph the signal strength of various different wireless networks. Now, we can take this even further and start graphing devices as well. So whether you want to track down a rogue wireless access point that's suddenly spun up near your house, or you want to find out where a cell phone is, this technique will generally apply to both. Now, in order to use it, you will need a Kali compatible wireless network adapter like this Alpha one here and a directional antenna. In this case, we're using a panel one, but if you want to get crazy, you can also use a parabolic dish or a Yagi antenna as well. You'll also need a computer with Wireshark running, but that's pretty much it because the rest of this is just using some really cool but poorly documented features of Wireshark in order to track down the location of these devices. Once you have a directional antenna and a Kali compatible wireless network adapter, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you get confused and you want to follow along. Once you have both these ready and plugged into your computer, then we can begin. Today, we're going to get started signal hunting with Wireshark. And if you didn't know that was possible, that's probably because it's pretty poorly documented and not a lot of people I've seen have been talking about how you can hunt down the location of a signal using a directional Wi-Fi antenna and Wireshark. But today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So first, I plugged in my directional Wi-Fi adapter and this is a uh, Alpha Wireless Tube, uh, let's see, Tube U adapter which is awesome. It has a, oh, UNA. Uh, so it has a Theros, I believe, uh, Wi-Fi adapter chip and a directional outdoor antenna that is a 10 dBi panel antenna. So this is a setup that I believe is meant for a boat because it's waterproof, but it's also Kali Linux compatible. It's like 50 bucks or so for the adapter. And um, it's a really, really cool setup. So if you want to try something out that also has a super long USB cable so you can go around searching for the source of that mysterious signal, I highly recommend this particular setup. So I'm going to type ifconfig. And initially, I do not see my network adapter, so that's a little concerning, but I can quickly rectify that. If I type IPA, there we go, I can see it, WLAN1. And if I type ifconfig, WLAN1 up, I should be able to type ifconfig again. And there we go, we see our wireless network adapter. Now, Wireshark can't control this directly, so we're going to need to go ahead and do a little bit of work first. And we're going to find the network that we're searching for or hunting for first by running arrow dump ng. So we'll go ahead and run arrow, uh, first airmon ng to put the card into wireless monitor mode. So airmon ng start wlan1. There we go. And yep, it's an Ethereum communication card. That's super cool. So we're going to then do arrow dump ng. WLAN 1 should be mon now. And if you want to verify this, you can just type ifconfig again, and we can see that our card is in monitor mode. So we'll do arrow dump ng, WLAN 1 mon. And now I'm going to specify tac C1, which is saying channel 1. And if you don't do this, then it'll go ahead and scan on every single channel, but you will miss things on the channel that you're not on every the entire time it's scanning. So you're going to miss a lot of different packets. And if you already know which channel your target is on, you should specify it here. So if you don't know this, go ahead and just run it without the channel specified, and you'll be able to figure out pretty quickly uh, which channel your target is on. Now I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because now we're on the target channel and I'll be able to open Wireshark. So let's go ahead and do that. Once we open Wireshark, we're going to select our wireless network adapter that's in monitor mode as our source. And I'll go ahead and click through this. We will open WLAN1Mon. And all right, 
Now, I can see all sorts of transmissions from our fake networks that are our target. And in this case, I'm going to click on one of these broadcast packets, and I will look for a beacon frame that contains the SSID I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to go after this fake IHOP guest network, and if I click on the details under IEEE 802.11, I can see very quickly who the transmitter of this packet was. Now if I right mouse click on this and then click on apply as filter and selected, I can build a filter that only shows me uh, packets that are from this transmitter. And if you want to use the uh, source address as well, you can do that too. Now if I want to simplify this a little bit, in this case I'm only getting IHOP guests but I want to get all the other fake networks that are being generated by the same rogue device. And I happen to know <clears throat> that the first three um, octets of the MAC address are actually all the same from this fake uh, network generating device, which is actually Space Hoon Speaking Spammer. So I'm going to put in brackets here, zero colon three. So I should go from the first index, this one, all the way to the third. And uh, I can now delete the last half of this MAC address. And what I've done is I've created a display filter that's only looking for the first half of the MAC address. So now, instead of just one SSID, I should be getting all of the packets that are being broadcast by this fake network. And this is really, really important uh, because if you're going after a rogue access point, you should make sure to create a display filter that actually allows you to capture as many different packets from that transmitter as possible. So if it's transmitting not just beacon frames, but also data packets, you want to be able to get a, an idea of the signal strength over time. And the more information you have, the better. So now that I have a good display filter, I'm going to copy it, and if I press down here, I can see I'm getting a lot of packets pretty frequently, and they all have a signal strength. And that's what we're going to be plotting when we go to statistics and IO graph. Now I am going to have to set this up a little bit, and you can click on the plus to create a new uh, graph. And the most important thing is going to be the display filter. So go ahead and paste in the display filter here. And you should see then the uh, ability to set the Y axis. So go ahead and set the Y axis to the average of the Y field. And this one's really important. You're going to set the Y field to WLAN underscore radio dot signal underscore DBM. You can set this last variable to 10, although I've set it to zero as well and it doesn't really seem to matter. But here you can also set it to a line graph and this pretty much makes the most sense when we're graphing signal strength. Now we have everything set up, uh, we can even adjust the color and provided all, everything looks more or less the same as you see on my screen, you should be now graphing the signal strength of the particular network uh, as received by your directional antenna over time. So if we lift this up and start moving it around, we should start to see dips and all sorts of other different things come into play as we move it around and experience different signal strengths. Now I'm gonna exit out of this, I'm gonna stop, and then I'm gonna restart the capture so we can get a clean graph. So first I'm gonna continue without saving, I'm gonna open up the IO graph again, and here we go, we are beginning from scratch at a signal strength of around 72 or 73. Now I'm going to pick up this directional antenna and we should see a spike in signal as soon as we have it oriented horizontally rather than flat on the table. And this is because originally we just had it in an orientation that wasn't particularly useful. Um, and actually it looks like it's gotten slightly worse and that's because I have it pointing completely uh, away from the source of these packets. So in order to get a good baseline, I'm just gonna hold it here steady for a little bit until we get a good average. And when we have an average, I'm slowly going to start rotating this around and see if I can observe a spike in any particular orientation. Now I'm gonna start slowly rotating it now. And on the screen, we should be looking for a rise in signal strength. And basically when you know you've zeroed in on it, you should see a big spike with a big come down on the other side, indicating that there's been a really big drop off uh, immediately after a peak. Now you may also find that sometimes having a source directly behind the directional antenna can cause it to have a smaller spike as well. 
And that's because if you check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, you'll see that there's actually a small lobe on the back that also has pretty good signal strength on these panel antennas. Now, as I rotate it around, you can see we just got a massive spike that is starting to plateau and even decline a bit as I continue to rotate. And that's because we've honed in on the exact location of where this broadcast is coming from. And as I continue ro to rotate it around, you can see we get a continuing decline until we go all the way back around and have the directional antenna facing 180 degrees away from the source of the signal. As soon as we do that, we have another signal spike uh, from the lobe on the back of the antenna, but it is nowhere near as strong as when we have it directionally pointed straight towards it. So I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit faster one more time so we can observe that signal spike. And you can see that we just get nowhere near as strong of a signal until we have it pointed directly at the source of the signal. Now, if I was tracking down this rogue access point because maybe I was an IT professional and I wanted to find out where someone had connected a device that wasn't supposed to be there, this would be a pretty short task because I would be able to go to one location, sweep around, and then look for the strongest signal source in order to locate it step by step. By analyzing and graphing the signal strength of nearby wireless devices, we can easily track them down using a directional antenna, but there are a couple limitations to this technique. Now, a lot of different devices will randomize their wireless MAC address in order to prevent this kind of tracking. But in general, you can get around this by broadcasting a whole bunch of fake networks that they've probably joined before, like Google Starbucks. Because seeing a familiar network will cause a device to stop randomizing its MAC address and present its real one, allowing you to track it once again. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you got confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description to follow along. If you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.